us. You may be seated. The light of hope. The light of hope. Praise God. Amen. Now, if you remember last Sunday, for those who were here, a lesson from Mark's gospel introduced us to John the baptizer, whom he presented at this figure who seemed to step out of the pages of Israel's newspaper. <laughs> and he said, prepare the way of the Lord. You remember that? Amen. According to Mark's gospel, John's message was just too simple. It was way too simple. He's described as calling people to repent. Amen. You remember we defined what repent is, metanoia, to change one's mind, to alter one's course. But this morning we're reintroduced back to John the Baptist again. This time, according to John's gospel, where he's, he's got a little bit, he, his message is stressed in a different way. This text mentions that you heard read about his call for not only repentance, but confession. Praise the Lord. Instead, he says, he stresses the role that I want to point you to who Jesus really is. I want to point you to the Messiah who's coming to bring the light of God's redemption to a dark world. Now, during the season of Advent, it means to announce, to be excited. Also means God, which means to have joy for, to have joy for. And so I want to give you three ways just quickly before we get into the lesson today. Jesus wants us to represent him as a light of hope. Number one, you can't be ashamed of who you are. You can't be ashamed of who you are. And we're going to talk about verse 20 in just a few minutes. Number two, you have to identify your mission. You have to identify your mission. And then number three, you have to point people to Jesus. Point people to Jesus. Amen. And so, and, and if we look at this message in context, beloved, this was a dark world. We still live in a dark world, but I'm not talking about it's shortened because of it's, it's winter time. But Israel in that time, beloved, was uh, living under a lot of political oppression. The hands of the Romans and the, they had captured and occupied much of the country. And imagine the stress and anxiety of that day, beloved, that would result from living in such a bad situation. The times they had, they were very difficult. Uncertainty about the future uh, prevail. Amen. But I love what John writes in verses 1 through 5. I'm just going to read quickly. He says, in the beginning was the Word. Say the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning, what? With God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life. Say life. And the life was the light. Say the light of all people. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it or comprehend it or understood it. Are you following me? Amen. And so in other words, the light to which John the Baptist came to witness to, beloved, it points us to believe uh, in who Jesus was. Jesus was God incarnate in flesh. That's who he was. He was God incarnate in in flesh. He took the place in creation. He was, Jesus was there even then. The universe established the life of the planet we call earth. And because of all of this, God saw fit to send a representative of himself into the world at an appointed time. Amen. But the light of hope to which John the Baptist points us to is not a hope that our belief and faith in Jesus Christ will make our lives a bed of roses. Say amen. And to enable us to avoid darkness of our world. Nope. Or the pains and anxieties that we all experience in life. Not at all. But rather, it's a message that proclaims that in spite of the darkness we all deal with, even in this world, the 
stresses of our lives, sickness in your body, problems on your job, problems uh, in, in other areas of your life. The light of hope that Christ provides will ultimately prevail. Amen. So John the Baptist now, now watch this. He, oh, they put amen up there. Did y'all see that? It's our new system. It says amen. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> amen. Has anyone ever been called to the office when you were in grade school, like I was? <laughs> No, you, you you were, you wasn't. No, were you? Okay. Anybody middle school called to the office? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anybody high school ever called to the office? Old folks over here. Little, can I get amen? <laughs> okay, y'all over here. Y'all were good over here. All the bad folks over here. <laughs> yeah, brother John got his hand up. <laughs> <laughs> mm hmm. Told me a lot about y'all. I was all right in middle school. I was cool. In elementary school, I was not good. No, 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 I was not good. Uh, high school, I got through that. No, I was all right. I was all right. But it was college, first year. <laughs> I didn't do it. I just saw it. Where we come from, you know, we didn't speak correct grammar. We would say, I seen it. I seen it. I seen it. I, I didn't do it. But, I, uh, but anyway, <laughs> I had a roommate, had a rough life, and it was four of us to a room. Why did they do that? It was a big room, too. And this guy, he just... He lit our door on fire one night. I came from eating and me and another roommate and then we saw it and then the RA said, oh, y'all going to see Dean Lampkin. Oh, no, not him. He kicked everybody out of school. <laughs> Dean Lampkin is dead and gone now, but uh, I'll never forget that. But um, he wanted to know what really happened. Amen. You ever been called to the office on your job? I ain't looking about, I ain't looking about, I ain't looking about, I ain't looking about. Well, John was called to the office of the scribes and the Pharisees. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. And they demanded, beloved, to know what he was doing. They called him on the carpet. They asked him a series of questions, as it says in the text. Which takes us to our first point. Don't be ashamed of who you are. Amen. Look at this, verse 19. And this is the testimony of John when Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? Who are you? He said, I can't deny it. I'm John. I'm not Christ, if that's what you ask it. They ask him, well, are you Elijah? No, I'm not that. I'm not him. Are you the prophet? No. He was not the most friendliest of people. Remember, last week we taught because he baptized thousands upon thousands. He just dipped you, you left. Dip. Come on, next. Down. Next. Down. We didn't do that today. These young men said, no, you ain't going to do that to me. One of them said, man, it's water cold. I got here early to try to warm it up. You ain't want to touch that warm and I warm or burn you up. But are you the prophet? No. Then he said, who are you? Mm -hmm. Let us have an answer. We want to know where you came from. Amen. We want to know who you are. What's your mission, man? What do you have to say? Because we got to have something to say. Then if John's not the Christ, who is he? Our lesson sheds some light on that. Isaiah 61. We, we already read that, right? Yeah. Jesus is light. Oh, now Christ is the one he brings hope into the world. Right? That's what he came for. Hope that you and I don't have to walk in the paths of the world alone. The Lord enables us to be able to do so. Amen. Are you with me right now? And so number two, you have to identify your mission. 
your mission. Identify your mission. Number, uh, verse 23. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Remember, we read that, Isaiah 61, verse 1. John was not Jesus, right? No, but he was announcing who was coming. He was announcing, announcing, he was the announcer, he was the DJ, whatever you want to call him. He was announcing, amen. Verse 24, now those who were sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, saying, why do you baptize? Why are you doing this? That's what he asked preachers. Why are y'all doing this? This doesn't make sense. If you ain't Christ, you're not the prophet Elijah. Uh, well, then why are you doing this? Amen. Amen. Mm. John doesn't like to pat himself on the back. All right. Not John the Baptist, but John who wrote this. He said, basically, I'm writing what I saw. All right. This is what happened. John gives sidebar examples. He says, well, the Pharisees were present. That ain't had nothing to do with the story too much, except just to say they were there. We already know that, John. Are you following me? Look at what he said about the Pharisees. He made mention of them thinking the reader would understand who they were. So if you know anything about the Pharisees, they viewed themselves as superior elitists. Amen. Right? They rejected Jesus as the Messiah, but how many of you know that Jesus didn't care anything about the Jewish leaders? He did not care, Pastor, for the Pharisees. They constantly Constantly opposed what he did for humanity. Whenever he would heal, you can't do that on the Sabbath day. You can't do this. You can't do that. Well, what can I do? Amen. So it was about 6,000 of them who lived at that time. Praise God. They knew the letter of the law, but they didn't apply it. They burdened other folks and put all kinds of limitations on them in their areas of worship. If you remember, beloved, even Paul's teacher, Gamaliel, you remember him? Remember we studied him out of Acts chapter 5, verse 34. He was a Jewish doctor. He was a lawyer. He taught Paul. He said, I'm a Pharisee. Amen. Even Paul was a Pharisee until he got converted. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 26. John said, I baptize with water. Hallelujah. I feel the Lord right now. But there stands one among you whom y'all don't even know. You don't know him. We don't know him. John said, what I do, I do this thing symbolically, Pastor. Amen. This is my mission. This is my call. This is what I'm supposed to do. This is part of, of what, this is, what, this is why I'm, I've been created. Y'all don't know. Y'all ain't ready. Amen. That's what he said. Jesus, the light of the world, verse 27. It's he coming after me. He's preferred before me whose who's, uh, 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 straps of his sandals, I, I, I ain't, I ain't going I ain't, uh, I ain't to even pull them off of it. No, no, I can't do that. I'm not worthy. That's what he was saying. John didn't even consider himself, John the Baptist, worthy enough to even help the man out of shoes. Jesus. Verse 28, these things were done in Bethabara, beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. Bethabara means the house of passage. The house of passage. And this is the place where the Israelites, they pass the River Jordan under Joshua's leadership. My God. If you remember last week, we talked about how John baptized in the nasty, murky, sewage infested trash ridden Jordan River. It wasn't no beautiful river. No, it wasn't nothing beautiful about the Jordan River. Mm -mm. If you remember, we talked last week about the commander Naaman. He said, well, what God told him through the prophet Elijah, go dip seven times in the Jordan River and your flesh will be whole. No, I need to dip over here. I need to go over here. I need to go over there. No, no, no. John thought it was symbolic to mention, wait a minute, this is the Jordan River. Remember, miracles took place there. So let's mention that. This is it. This is it. Oh, but this really is another part of the river. This ain't really too much of the Jordan River. See, John is 
becomes a little bit more descriptive, beloved, and he talks about this small area. See, he's not only limited to just baptizing in the Jordan River. John said, basically, if there's water, I'm going to baptize it. You're going down. <laughs> so somebody said, he went down, he went down, he went down. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to baptize you if I can. Amen. As I begin to close this, look here at point number three. Point people to Jesus. Verse 29, look at this. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him. And guess what he said? He said, behold, hallelujah, I feel the Lord on that. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God that was spoken in Isaiah 53, 7. Point people to Jesus who can give them peace. My God. Point people to Jesus who can give them some hope. Point people to Jesus who can give some direction. I wish I had somebody with me right now. Point people to Jesus who can give us some strength for the journey. Hallelujah. Point people to Jesus who can heal them in their body. Heal them from the pain of the past. Heal them from the pain of despair. Pain of discouragement. Pain of disappointment. Pain of rejection. Point people who can give them grace to Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus the light of hope. Jesus the beacon of light. Jesus the light of peace. Come on talk to me somebody. You ain't with me right now. We almost done with this but Jesus can heal their mind. He can heal their body. I wish I had at least at least 40 or 50 y'all would stand on your feet and give God some praise. He can give somebody strength in the midst of the storm. Strength in the midst of the trial. Heal on the inner memory. Heal in the peace of the mind. Heal and restore joy. My God, he can forgive sins and forgive folks. He can heal somebody from regret. Heal from resentment. Give somebody favor. Give somebody freedom. Give somebody a new imagination. Give you reassurance. Give you confidence. Give you wisdom. Increase your prayer life. Increase your praise life. Free you from confusion. Settle your heart. Cast out the fear. Cast out any demonic force that's not of God. God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. He'll equip you in new ways. Give you new witty inventions. Open doors for you. Heal your mind. Touch in your spirit. Deliver you from any bondage. Whatever you're going through, point people to Jesus. Jesus is the light of hope. Jesus is the light of peace. Jesus is the light of your new anointing. He's raising you up to a new level. How many of you know that new levels bring some new devils? Hallelujah. But there's a devil for every level. God wants you to know you have nothing to be afraid of. Step up into your new season of grace. Step into your new season of blessing. Step up. Come on, somebody. You don't have anything to worry about. Jesus is your light of hope. He's your light of peace. He's your light of deliverance. If you would only trust him, take him with you everywhere you go, everywhere you go, everywhere you go. It could be on that job. Take him everywhere you go. In that neighborhood, take him everywhere you go. In the neighborhood, take him everywhere you go. In the church, take him everywhere you go. Hallelujah. When you're getting ready to get the new job, take him everywhere you go. In the doctor's office, take him everywhere you go. Trust him to lead you. Trust him to guide you. Trust that he's with you. Trust him that he's going to give you what to say. Hallelujah. He's just that kind of God. Hallelujah. Jesus, the light of hope.